turns out that you can rearrange formulas, functions, equations to fit your needs. Um, and you can rearrange them to solve for different variables. The most useful version of a formula will depend on the given situation. So let's take a look at an example. Let's go with the classic um, distance equals rate times time. And let's say that Megan can walk two miles in an hour. How far will she walk in three hours? All right, so she can walk, let's see here. The distance would be equal to two miles every hour times three hours walking. All right, now, from a unit standpoint, you can see that the hours are going to divide out, and you'll be left with 2 times 3, which, of course, is just 6 wow. miles. Let's switch it up a bit. Let's say we wanted to know how long it would take her to go 10 miles. This time, you know the distance, and you want to find the time. So what we do here is we take the original formula, and we rearrange it for time. To do that, we would have to divide both sides by r. So, we would see that the distance divided by the rate would be equal to the time. So, let's see, she wants to go 10 miles, and we want to see um, how long this is going to take. So, we take the 10 miles, and we divide it by the 2, miles per hour, okay, miles per hour, and that's going to give us five hours. All right, let's take a look at another example. Here we have the famous Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion uh, equation. Fahrenheit is equal to 32 degrees plus 1.8 times the Celsius degrees. Now, this is kind of interesting here because uh, we can switch this up. We can rearrange this algebraically so that we can find the Celsius equivalent if we know the Fahrenheit. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's algebraically rearrange this formula for Celsius. First thing we would like to do here is get rid of this 32 algebraically. So we're going to subtract 32 from both sides of the equation. Now, of course, that's the same thing as adding a negative 32, which is the opposite of positive 32. So when we do this, we're going to end up with 0 here. And of course, 0 plus 1.8c is just 1.8c. Now, over here, I'll get the Fahrenheit temperature minus 32 degrees. So we're almost there. All we have to do is get rid of the 1.8. So to do that, we will divide on both sides of the equation by 1.8. So there we have it. Celsius is always going to be equal to the Fahrenheit. Take away 32 and then divide that result by 1.8. All right. Now, I have a friend from Poland named Beatrice. And she was over visiting me, and I happened to tell her that it was 32 degrees out. And she was just horrified. She just thought that that was extremely hot. And I want to see why. Why was this lady so outraged thinking that 32 degrees would be um, hot? Okay. Well, she was thinking Celsius. Okay. She was thinking Celsius. So let's go ahead and see what would happen if we plugged 32 degrees okay, into this first equation. Because this is what she was thinking. She was, she's trained to think Celsius. <laughs> Let's go ahead and see what poor Beatrice was thinking. 
the Fahrenheit equivalent of what was in her mind would have been 32 degrees plus 1.8 times 32 degrees. She's thinking 32 degrees Celsius. Well, I want to see what that is in Fahrenheit. All right, so the first thing we have to do is the multiplication because we're going to simplify this side of the equation. So 1.8 times 32 57.6. 57.6. Well, by George, by Jingo, if we go ahead and add that to 32, we're going to get 89.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is the equivalent of 32 degrees in poor Beatrice's yeah, mind. No wonder she thought it was hot.